All right, um, here. And I've heard about these illustrations for my entire life, but I needed to come see them for myself in person. Right here, you see the cattle with the details. And I want you to see and look at the people. And obviously they're on a boat. You see the crocodile with the details. You see the hippopotamus with the detail, the fish with the detail. And now we come here to this individual and you begin to look at the hair texture and how it was described and the skin color. And these are just things, you know, we hear about, but then when you come see them in person, you're like, okay, this wasn't something that was just made up last week. And the way that history has been trying to rewrite itself, trying to say, that, you know, basically whitewashing everything, this would be gone, but it's still here. And so this leads to more questions. And I believe that's what this is all about, more questions. Tantia, you, you, you have a good background on this. Actually here, this is Queen Idut. Queen Idut. It mm -hmm. dates back to 2323 BC. Mm -hmm. This is one of the best tomb. It shown us all the daily life during the ancient Egyptian time. Mm -hmm. How they hunting, how they fishing. You can see the crocodile, a different mm -hmm. fish. And this is the originally color. Do you manage? We still have the same colors until today. It seemed like they just made it yesterday. Do you know what type of substance they use in order to maintain the, uh, the color? Yes. They collect uh, different uh, flowers from the lotus flower, okay. mix it together with the water to make the color. Okay. Even they use like the white. Mm -hmm. from the eggs okay. to make, to make it. I wanted to point this out right here. The, the baskets, the food on the mm -hmm. baskets, and this is very reminiscent of what's happening in many parts of Africa, in particular West Africa. I see it because I spent a lot of time in but I've seen it in East Africa as well. And I imagine it's in South Africa and North Africa too, but you, you can begin to see here's someone with the basket. It looks like bread. And then it looks like a duck or something, some sort of fowl in the hand. And again, you come back to the hair texture and you can feel the hair texture. It's not painted on here. You can feel where it is actually engraved into the uh, And the all, stone. also actually all this vase, mm -hmm. it has like essential oil. Ah, essential oil. Because they, they keep it for the afterlife. Ah, so right. that means like once you leave the essential oil, it stay with you forever. Mm -hmm. And you still have the same smell because this is all like offering for hair. Understood, understood. Even here you see some animal that looks like it's been slaughtered. You see them rowing the boat. You see again, all of these different features. And this is just the beginning of this Egypt journey for me. Um, and, and I find this to be very valuable from an educational standpoint. Not just somebody telling me, but me now, I've touched this right here. I feel the, 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 the engraving, I can feel how the ridges of it, where it's not just something, you know, just looking at a picture. And that's why it's so important for you to come see for yourself. And that's what we're doing. One more thing. Yes. It might be your family. It Nobody it might be. knows. It might be. You're right. But look at all the detail right here. I mean, if they could be that detailed with the fish and the cows and the other animals, why wouldn't they be that detailed with the people? Exactly. If they can precision to the teeth in the hippopotamus, to the scales of the fish, to the crocodile mouth, all of this, you see them fighting to the description of the types of fights that hippos have. I've seen that in person in the Serengeti in Tanzania. The scale, the fins of the fish, why wouldn't that be the same right there with the accuracy? This is how you break down history and this is how you break down facts, if you will. This was their illustration, and this is what was happening during their time. Whoever created this had enough skill and paid enough attention to detail down to the fish hooks to say, this is how the fish are caught. These are fish hooks, and then you even see what they've caught. You see the knife for the scaling. You see them working. All of these details, they're birds. I mean, there's so many things represented here. You just gotta come see for yourself. Open up your eyes and see
the adventures of Darren and Destiny. And Darren and Destiny are twin brother and sister. And you go on their adventures throughout the African diaspora, meaning so African diaspora destinations, primarily focused in Africa, but we go to South America, we're gonna to go to the Caribbean. Their first book is going to take you to Ghana. And then we're gonna go on a safari, and from there, we're going to go to Ethiopia and then we go to Salvador, Brazil. And what the goal is, is to be able to inspire curiosity in the continent of Africa, in our children from a very young age, and to really tell a more accurate story. Most of our children are exposed to negative images, late night infomercials about how bad things are, everybody's sick, everybody's poor, everyone's uneducated, but that's simply not true. So what Darren and Destiny and their family do is they go to different African destinations. They are learning about these different places. You're beginning to see positive images, but still telling the truth. I mean, that's the important thing, to tell the truth about some of the things that have occurred. But it's all done on a children's level so they begin to understand it. And it begins to pique their curiosity. They begin to learn more. And hopefully one day they will want to explore and visit the continent of Africa and as many countries. There's just so much that Darren and Destiny are able to do and as they're doing it it's, it's like they begin to open the minds of a, a new generation and they don't get bombarded and indoctrinated with negativity they're actually able to see positivity and inspiring images and messages about the African diaspora as well as those who are still indigenous to the continent of Africa and they begin to learn more and, uh, and just see things differently. So I'm excited about introducing the adventures of Darren and Destiny.